Population density. Uh, this is a map that was constructed uh, in 1950, I think, by <coughs> uh, one of the pioneer geographers in Ireland, T.W. Freeman. And he published a book called Pre-Famine Ireland. And one of the features of his book was that he, uh, he, he, he showed, uh, he had these maps of population density. And what this uh, does is he tries to map, rather than sort of mapping by counties or parishes uh, and averaging out densities, he tried to take into account where the people actually were and uh, uh, then the uninhabited tracts of bogland and uplands uh, where people weren't. And what he's able to show with that sort of population density map is that the highest densities are along the coast. Uh, around Clue Bay, uh, up there uh, in Kalala, Bally Castle area, and then a, a, a zone in East Mayo around Swinford. I think a little bit about early initiatives to represent <coughs> Mayo on a map. And this is one of the earliest, probably the earliest map uh, that attempts to represent Mayo. Uh, it's a, a map that was constructed uh, by somebody probably called John Brown. There were two John Browns. Uh, an uncle and a nephew, uh, but John Brown uh, probably made this map in the mid-1580s. And as you can see, Ma Mayo is on its side, as it were, there. Uh, the north is to your uh, right, uh, your, uh, and uh, Clue Bay is there right in the middle. Uh, and I just put in uh, Clue Bay a little bit, another view of Clue Bay, and this man manages to uh, quite convincingly show the island-studded nature of Clue Bay uh, on this particular map. Uh, Hal Petty uh, represented uh, the Clue Bay area, and you can see the huge number of place names that he has. Uh, in 1685, uh, somebody had got around and made a pretty good record of uh, where places were, and then they were giving, trying to give some indication of this sort of low Drumlin Hills uh, that studded the landscape uh, as well. Uh, they don't tell you very much else. They don't tell you about roads, for instance. 15 years, 20 years later, on the other hand, <coughs> a guy called Henry Pratt <coughs> made a map of Ireland and uh, uh, this was made, I think, in 1708, actually. And uh, I've uh, drawn on the roads in red uh, on this map, right? Because I've highlighted the roads just to make it a bit easier to see them. Uh, and you can see Pratt isn't so interested in the place names. He just takes a, a modest selection of place names. He puts in the barony names like Costello and Gallon um, and Tiroli and Eris and so forth. Uh, Boris Hool, uh, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't really uh, worry about putting in every place name. Uh, but what's interesting about this is he's the first guy that really tries to show roads across Ireland uh, in a reasonably authentic, uh, comprehensive manner. And you can see uh, the roads coming up uh, from, um, I suppose, Ballin the Slow area heading towards Castle Bar and then dipping around to get to. And he also has, I think this says Westport uh, on this map. Um, this is uh, 1708 and Westport appears. I don't know whether it's for the first time or not or when Westport appears as a, as a uh, maybe somebody will, will, uh, will help me out on that later. later on maybe but uh, this is this is uh, just just picking up on uh, again the Clue Bay area uh, 1708 there's Westport uh, and uh, we have uh, the roads I didn't highlight them so clearly there but you can clearly see that there are roads converging on the barracks center with the pennant on it at Castle Bar as well so that's what it looked like in 1708 now this was <clears throat> the grand jury was the, the kind of county council of the period. It was made up of landlords, 23 of the leading landlords of each county. And they had to raise local taxes for upkeep of roads, and then they needed to know where the roads were. So they needed a map to, to find out where the roads were. The people were sort of saying, give us a, uh, give us a 
bit of a grant to give a few potholes here and a few potholes there, and a few gullies and so forth. And uh, they needed they needed road a roads map. And the government even came in and then said, we'll give you grants to, uh, to try to encourage you to make maps. And it was against that background that uh, the grand jury, the local authority, uh, asked William Bald, uh, who was a Scotsman, uh, to produce their county map. And he started in 1809, I think it was, uh, and he took seven years to actually do the survey of Mayo, and then it took another 14 years to get the map engraved and published. It's this map of County Mayo, and uh, started when he was 20, finished when he was 42. Um, final map in 25 sheets, cost 6,000 pounds, which is quite dear. The southwest of Mayo, uh, the area from Killary Harbour down here, uh, right up to Croke Patrick, uh, the Sheafree Mountains, I suppose, uh, Partry and Sheafree Mountains would be uh, included here, um, and then uh, we're into the lowlands over here, and that's what a full map of balls looks like when it's, uh, that's the engraved and printed version of it. Um, now, uh, it's very different what he did in his manuscript maps. This is um, Ball's uh, manuscript map, part, part of Ball's manuscript map of the south southwest of, our, of Mayo. Uh, the the uh, orangey brown is the Ball's, uh, but he shows Crow Patrick uh, on this map. And you can see it's, it's quite a nice sort of, uh, quite an artistic, I think, uh, representation of, of Crow Patrick uh, that he's showing there. This is Westport, um, and uh, I think this might be one of the earlier maps of Westport. It's definitely not the earliest, but uh, it's, uh, it's Westport in 1812. Uh, here's where we are, to, we are today, I think, down here uh, at the, the quay, um, the domain, the castle, um, and then you can see the octagon here, yeah? And uh, we get the idea of the the, a well-planned town. The Mouths is here, yeah? Um, so uh, it's quite an interesting early representation, uh, I think, of Westport. And um, he shows villages uh, in, uh, this is the area near uh, Tala, Talabon, I think it's called down here, near um, Wheel Ray is down here. Uh, this is, uh, uh, Lewisburg is up here. Um, and uh, he shows the villages. This is an area without roads at that time, but uh, uh, studded with villages, uh, and Bald is quite good at giving us an impression of that. And on his, uh, on his uh, manuscript map, the contrast between the planned nature of Louisburg here uh, with the church, um, Protestant church and the mill, uh, the planned little village here, and then the uh, fairly chaotic villages, uh, cha chaotically laid out villages uh, uh, in, in the surrounding area, uh, the contrast is quite, quite strikingly. Uh, effort at Westport, uh, where the, the domain uh, comes up, uh, he's painted it in in green and shows the woodland areas of the domain quite well. Um, here and again, the octagon and the 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 the, the mall area. I think no, sorry, the mall area here uh, comes out uh, very strongly on on this particular plant of uh, bits of Mayo. So here's Ackle Island, yeah, and uh, you see it's very corrugated sort of look because Sleep Moor is up here and there's uh, various other bits of hills and so forth, Manon and so forth, and uh, we have a uh, great contr physical con Now, but what, what Bald was interested in was how could, what's the most effective way of explaining to people that there's such, uh, he says Bald's map of Mayo is in a class by itself. Bald, he says, was one of the half dozen ablest, most hardworking, the most creative map makers ever to practice in Ireland. So there's two different, the retrospective view which admires the map, 
and then they kind of telegraph saying this is useless, um, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, it was true. I mean, that they wanted boundaries, and the map didn't have boundaries on the thing. So that's one of the problems. Um, now, uh, another of the problems was the engraving. And the question does arise, after all this, how good was the, the engraving of this map? And this is what Westport looks like on the, uh, on the map. Uh, the engraved and printed map. There's the, the mal, and there's the octagon. And you see, it's reduced, it's changed around a little bit. I don't know whether, do you think that looks, how does, uh, I don't know, is it good or is it bad? Or is it miserable? Uh, I don't know, the, I, yeah, I put it on at a slightly larger scale just to let you, let you see it there. Uh, there. There's what it looks like again, the octagon, um, and the mall and so forth and you get the town plan all right but this business of, of regular space black dots for housing I don't think it looks that great I, I, feel, I feel that compared to his his uh, manuscript version of it which I've reproduced here again um, that was what he did in 1812 this is what's on his 1830 map that one looks a better is a better uh, representation of, of uh, but that's my view of it anyway. You can tell me afterwards what you think. Now, um, we're going to just briefly take a look at the impact of the Ordnance Survey by way of uh, finishing up. Uh, you'll be relieved to know. And um, this is uh, what I want to talk about here is the Ordnance Survey came along in the 1830s, and of course, they were better than bald. <coughs> They also had 2,000 people employed on the Ordnance Survey of Ireland, whereas Mr. Bald had at the most 12 people employed on the Survey of Mayo. So they did have better resources. They were on an industrial scale. They were working their way quickly across Ireland, processing uh, maps and town plans, 1,900 sheets for the whole of Ireland. And it's a very different sort of thing to, uh, to uh, Bald. There are, I just want to show you very briefly, two, two versions of the six inch plan. This was a, the standard plan that they produced. The 1900 sheets were on six inches to one mile was what it was called, the scale. One to 10,000 about. And uh, then there were also large scale town plans. And this is what the, the, the draft <laughs> plan for the Westport area looked like. There's Westport, there's the domain, and here's the rural area as it was drawn on what was called the fair plans, which were the hand-drawn plans uh, that, uh, that were uh, uh, made up for each part of each parish in Ireland. And uh, the fair plans uh, are quite interesting as in contrast to the uh, final plans sometimes. So um, I just put one on, this is Holly, near Hollymount, this is way down in the south of Mayo. But you see, there's, the fair plan has a ball court included there. Ball court, interesting, ball, ball alleys and ball courts are actually quite widespread in the 1830s. Um, it seems to be the first, one of the early sort of popular sports uh, across Ireland. And, uh, but uh, the, the Ordnance Survey humorless he doesn't want to put in ball, ball court um, on its final plan. So it puts in the name of the village, which was up here on this one, and it's down here. It's been moved from there to there. Ball court has been knocked out, and Purrins has been put in here. And we have um, various other little minor modifications as well uh, that, that you'll see. Here's, a, here's, a, here's an area near uh, Croke Patrick that I, it's a bit more interesting perhaps to, to, to Westport people. And uh, this is, uh, I know, it, the bit of the map has gone, gone missing here. Uh, but there's a place called Thorn Hill on the th Fair Plan. And Thorn Hill doesn't appear at all on this one. Um, and here, uh, this appears as, uh, this appears as uh, Glosh Holy Well. Um, I was told you had a debate on Holy Wells uh, at, a, at an earlier meeting. Um, and uh, here it appears as Tubber Naglosh. 
Uh, they, they keep on changing things around, and they change the spelling quite interesting as well. This is Omer of we, uh, this is Omer of boy here. You see, so, so uh, you, you think when you see the Ordnance Survey spelling, it, it should, it's standardized, but it's been standardized at quite a late stage. Um, Bertroy becomes Bertra. Well, that, that maybe Bartra is better than Bartroy, I don't know. Um, but uh, Omer of we seems to be, me to be better than Omer of boy. I, I, I'm wondering how, uh, you know, I don't know enough about the in, ins and outs of this to be able to tell you, but what I do think is interesting is be warned, the spellings on ordnance survey maps are, are quite, uh, quite invented quite lately, uh, quite late sometimes. And the same goes, we, we have different versions of the map of Westport as well, and sometimes different things appear on it. Uh, and uh, the, this is particularly, we can see, uh, I just want to show you a final thing, is the, the maps of the town of Westport that were done in the 1830s. Um, and uh, uh, for the towns, the Ordnance Survey did hand-drawn maps at a very large scale, and most of those hand-drawn maps are actually preserved uh, in the National Archives of Ireland. So there are these maps of Westport. Uh, some of you may know them, um, but they're, they're there in any case, waiting to be looked at. Um, and uh, I, I'll just show you a few images from them, um, and from the map of Castle Bar as well. Um, they were 10 times the scale of the six inch maps. So they're very large. And some of them took, uh, well the Castle Bar one, it tells you how long it took. 86 days it took them to map, make the map of Castle Bar, a hand-drawn map of Castle Bar. Uh, so a huge amount of effort went into it. Um, and it shows some things in great detail. The jail uh, gets shown in great detail. And I decided that it was worth just showing. The jail was one of the, the big infrastructural developments of Mayo in the 1830s, uh, 23,000 pounds went on the jail, uh, and uh, it, it was state of the art, uh, uh, and it had a governor's house, a female prison, an infirmary, um, stores, solitary cells here, one, two, three, one, two, three, solitary cells, and then it had sections uh, for different uh, different types of criminal, uh, those with misdemeanors, and those who were felons, and those who were debtors, um, and uh, vagrants. So uh, you were classified and then sent to the appropriate block. Um, what it doesn't show, I, I read about it in Lewis's Topographical Dictionary. There was a treadmill here for the prisoners as well to have a go on. Um, you know, like the mice have treadmills, but this was a human one for drawing water. <laughs> and it, it's made, but they don't seem to show the treadmill on the, on the plan, but nearly everything else is shown. Um, and uh, bits of, other bits, more civilized bits of Castle Bar, maybe are shown like the area around the green, and uh, the area around the linen hall um, is shown. Here's the linen hall. Linen, linen was big in, in, uh, in Ca Castle Bar and in Westport in the early 19th century. A ball alley again is shown here. I, I'm very interested in the ball alleys, um, but uh, I think there's a great scope for doing something more. I know Kevin Whelan did something about these years ago, but uh, here's the shambles area, uh, and there's a tan yard somewhere on this, uh, I think there's a tan yard, there's a distillery up here. Um, down, down on the left, yeah, and you can see, I think these are where the vats are. Uh, the, there's, there's several tan yards in these towns, but you see the great detail at which they've mapped uh, Castle Bar. Um, and uh, then uh, Westport gets the same treatment, um, and uh, you can see 
I think very faint lines here to show the divisions between houses are actually marked in on the Westport uh, map. And this, this map, is a, it's a really fascinating map. It's at Westport in 1838. So if you don't know it or you think it would be worth reproducing or something, it, it, it's a really interesting map, I think. Um, that deserves, and again we have a ball court, uh, I, get, I can't get away from them, um, uh, uh, up here in Church Street which is leading to Westport House um, and uh, there's the octagon with the mar market house uh, up here and a fountain uh, at the junction between Shop Street, High Street and Mill Street here. Um, so we, we don't get too much about who occupied place, different places, but we do get the layout of the, of the town in great detail. Um, and we can see along the Mall, the uh, big Catholic church that was built uh, at the end of 18, the 1820s. The shambles behind, is, is, a, is a approach from the street uh, in through a court, into a courtyard. And there's a big shambles area here. There's a brewery. There's a Methodist church. Uh, I think this is the linen market here. This is the courthouse. Uh, Westport schools, uh, presumably the, the, the perhaps Protestant schools, I don't know, <coughs> up here. Um, so there, there's a lot of detail. And I show you the, the sort of garden designs even uh, in, the, in the town. So there's a lot to be uh, perhaps pursued here. Um, this is the, the fair green area, just a little bit further down the mall. Um, and uh, I think maybe there's a couple of bits and pieces, maybe, and maybe I didn't notice them uh, here. There's another brewery, I think, here. And the Presbyterian meeting house is up here with a manse beside it uh, on the edge of the town. Presumably the Presbyterian meeting house dealt with the... Uh, had a, was there was the linen industry perhaps particularly and you, you get street detail when you look at the streets in more detail you see they, they, they show you one or two banks are shown here's the National Bank the one that Daniel O'Connell <laughs> founded uh, on um, James Street so, so and we've got a tan yard um, and this it shows you how you get in from the street there. And uh, then this is uh, Mill Street, and there's a Bank of Ireland, and the <coughs> rent office, presumably for the Westport Estate, is here. Um, so you're, you're getting huge detail, and the design of the gardens as well. Um, so, uh, and then there's also a map of Westport Quay. Uh, and I, I, I thought that one uh, is, is also very detailed. It shows the salt works uh, that were part of uh, the key area at that time. There's a turf key, there's two salt works. Uh, there's a baths here that would be very interesting to know a little bit more about, maybe. Um, and uh, then there's a custom house here. Uh, and of course, that's where we are, uh, the, where we are today. Uh, so I, I think that's. Uh, that's what I was going to end up with. Uh, so I just wanted to, I, I know I've rushed it, but it's just trying to give you an impression of the range of maps that exist and the, something about the possible interest areas that these maps uh, might stimulate uh, in relation to Mayo in the early 19th century. Thanks very much. Meat and uh, fish. Am I right about yeah. that? Butchers and butchers and, and slaughterhouses. And, and it, actually, the, the one in Castle Bar was beside the river because usually they were near rivers to wash away all the all the okay. blood and everything, you know. But in Westport, it wasn't. I don't know why that is. You mentioned the fair plans. Are they available? Yeah. You, I mean, I went and photographed those things last two weeks ago in, uh, in the National Archives. And are the fair plans the same numbers as the Sikhish fair plan sheets, the same number as the... No, no. They, there's an index book in the National Archives that you have to consult <coughs> under Ordnance Survey. And the fair plans are numbered, <coughs> they're arranged by parish, civil parish. So uh, the Westport ones are Achaval, I think. Uh, is that right? Um, they, they would be 
Uh, so you, you go and you get the number for up a valve, and then you put in your ticket, and uh, in due course something happens very much. Mm -hmm. You said <coughs> there were 12 copies of the, of the County Mayo map that Balls made. Were they all full size with 8 foot by 20? There were 200 copies of printed of the, of the printed county map that he, he got. He got 200 copies brought from size. Paris. Of that size? Yeah, the, 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 like, like mm -hmm. he had 200 sets of 25 sheets that were, were ava yeah, right. that were available for, uh, I don't know who bought them. I don't think there could have been very many. I, I imagine there were quite a few thrown out at the end of the day, you know. Was expecting 200 to sell would possibly be a bit optimistic. How did they construct the baseline? Was it like the original bar, set of bars they had for Ireland, or was it something else they used? He did it with... Uh, the baseline was for the survey, right? That's and right. He started off by, he constructed seven different baselines in different parts of Mayo, where there were flat areas where he thought he was going to be able to map them very, very precisely with a 50 foot chain. Okay. And he used, he measured the, the distances, I suppose, and re-measured them. He tried measuring one when uh, part of the lake uh, at Castle Bar was frozen <laughs> and he thought this was a great idea because it'd be flat and the perfect uh, and unfortunately some guy uh, moved the, uh, the stake that he had at the end uh, in the middle of his measurements so he, he abandoned that particular that particular one but he had seven different baselines so as to try to be very precise right across Mayo and he had this 50 foot chain. Uh, and then I think he bought himself a 100 foot chain from some surveyors, makers in London uh, to be even more precise. So it wasn't like the bars. It wasn't like the bars that they used for the other survey. Yeah. And were they pulling the chain around with them? I think so. I presume that's what they did. I don't know. Uh, sorry. Don't train. Um, you shared uh, Paul's triangulation points. Um, I was wondering where that's available, where that can be studied. The, 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 map, the map is, hmm, I think it's printed with them, with the, the county map. Uh, it's certainly in the National Library <coughs> set. I, I can't remember offhand. Uh, I, I think, let's see, there's 25 sheets. And I think there were two, two, two triangulation sheets as well. Because it, the one you showed was the north coast of, of Dubai, which is what I'm in, interested in. Yeah. Um, well, I, I took out, um, I, I, I think I, I enlarged a much larger diagram covering a, a, a wider area. I, I tried to customise this a little bit towards Clue Bay for, yeah, yeah. for this particular talk, but um, they, they are fairly easily available. So it'd be in the, in the National... The, 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 the na look, National the National Library, Library has, has uh, a series of volumes of County Mayo maps, yeah? And uh, I think one of the volumes is Ball's maps. And I think that... Uh, Included in that volume are the triangulation diagrams, and I think that the number, if you want the actual number, it's 16 I2 is the number of it, but I'm not going to guarantee that. Arnold, can I just say that, so the baseline was measured, and then, then the, the measure from that out to, to the triangular point. Dragged it with the chain, did they measure the, no, the, 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 the only thing they measured with the chain was the baseline. The baseline yeah. And then everything yeah. else was done by angles. Oh, of course. You yeah. see, with the other light. Yeah. And okay. so you say, hmm, there's Nephilim. And okay. I'm going to fix my, my light on that point, my, my, the other light on that, that point. Yeah. And then you, fit, you fix, you get Nephilim from four or five different yeah. points. And you have that point fixed then. Everything is done by angles. Uh, after you have the baseline precisely, yeah. precisely measured. Whereas the ordnance survey, 
they were doing the same. They do the same. They, they were yeah. doing it very soon. They they started on Loch Boyle and they spent they they obsessed on getting the baseline. It was a six mile baseline, and they they got it to within they thought half an inch. But I thought they were using lamps then to cut. Yeah, they were. The but it, it was all angles. I mean, oh, it, yeah, it, it's again, it, it's again doing it by trigonometry. Yeah. Um, and don't ask me to tell you what <laughs> the sign rule is or whether uh, I, I got that a number of years ago. Yeah. Uh, well, sorry, I just had a question about the box survey. They did they also measure kind of sections through the box? Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the <coughs> line is a very, uh, what I did there was, said there was a very compressed view of it, but uh, they, the bog survey uh, balls, quite interesting about, he did a lot of, he, he tried to suggest a, a sort of development program, he has a lot about bridges uh, in, in his bogs report as well, I think he has six diagrams of 60 bridges that he wants built in different places, but he has a lot of sec quite a few sections as well and his county map has sections where he compares ma the heights of mountains in Mayo with other parts of the world. So you, you were comparing Griffith and Balls and was, was it very varied through the, the, all the various surveyors throughout the country, were they all as different as Griffith and Balls were? Oh they were, yeah, they were, they, they, they were the bog survey is quite an interesting one because they, they really had to dredge up experts from anywhere they could get them. And they started uh, with canal engineers and mining engineers, but there was a canal boom at the time and not all of these guys wanted to be involved in the bog survey. So then they had to look for people outside Ireland. And this is where uh, Nimmo comes in. There's a famous guy called Alexander Nimmo who did, designed harbours and things in Mayo as well as elsewhere and, 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 and in Connemara and Kerry and uh, he, he, he started, he was recruited for the bog survey from Scotland uh, so, you know, they, they, there was a skills shortage, I think that's what it's called and so a bit like uh, you know, sort of an early version of, of people coming in to Ireland uh, immigrating to do the bog survey at what stage did they start to standardise the townland spellings? You see, the, I, I only learned about this when I was starting to do it, but it looks as if it's quite late. I mean, the, 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 those yeah. fair plans with Omer of We, mm -hmm. uh, and then it becomes Omer of Boy and the final one. There must have been some editor in the, in the Ordnance Survey, you know. I mean, like, was that just left up to one individual to decide? This is how you spell there must it, be there must be more than that. Mission. I was yeah. telling Paddy earlier on that the leash maps have uh, public houses on the fair plans <laughs> uh, because they're sort of easily fixed and they're permanent features of the landscape. Um, but they were edited out in the final map. That nobody was allowed to put in public houses on the final any, map. Any, if, you know, if you drive up to Mulrani, you, there are about three different spellings of yeah, the yeah, signposts. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Rani. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that. But I mean, the, the, you know, we, we've got all this stuff about translations and the mm. and the, uh, the, the 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 impact of the survey on, on spelling and on language and so forth, but. And I mean, I know there's a seven volumes on place mm. names in Mayo, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. Finn, 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 is it Finnbar McCormick? Fierker McGowan. Fierker McGowan is the guy, yeah. I mean, there's a huge mm. amount of stuff, so I, I don't know much anything about that. But the number of boy, that's John O'Donovan. Mm. John O'Donovan was a big the influence on place name standardization. And he, he went from boy, from we, to. Because like when you're coming from Donegal down to Connemara, down to Kerry, down to Waterford, all the different pronunciations in Irish, and he read, he just went for boy because it was the most neutral term between we and the different dialects, you know. So we that's one of them. There's a whole lot of other standardisations that O'Donovan did. You know? there used to be a place outside Castleberry called Bravey one time, and they've changed it to a name. They couldn't spell it. I mind pronounce it now the way they do. Bravey, yeah. And that only happened over ten years ago. They changed it. <coughs> Or something like that. But I'd call it briefly because I read, read it in the, on the map. Would I? Without that, no. <laughs> but even, no. even the current maps, 
you know, yeah. they're changing the names of the mantra mm. a lot of the mm. time. You know, they have different names. But I, I like Paul's ones because he he really did hear the things. You know, he wasn't coloured by what someone in the Ordnance Survey in Dublin mm. or John yeah. O'Donovan said or anything. Mm. He heard people. Uh, in the locality, and then he wrote down the names, and that, that's why I think that that his work is is particularly interesting. And as I said, there's, there's five thousand names on that thing, yeah. on that map, uh, so it, it, it's a mine for for anyone who's interested in in place names. Uh, excuse me, in doing the, the estate maps, did he get more detail doing the estate map than a map that he would do a county map? Well, you saw the three that are. The, you see, the funny thing is, he there's very few estate maps by, by anybody for Mayo really, but by Bald particularly, um, and those three that are on that Lynch Bloss site, are the only ones that are known of uh, by Bald as far as I know. In any case, there may be some in Shropshire as well. There's other Lynch Bloss maps. That, in some of the private houses, shop, Shopshire, but that's another story. But, but I mean, uh, he, he th th I think those estate maps by Bald show he was very he was interested in the physical features of the of the landscape far more than the Ordnance Survey wa was. You know, the Ordnance Survey did it by taking the heights and sticking in little dots and saying two hundred feet or something at a particular point. But you don't get any feel of the the sort of corrugated nature of the landscape of the Drumlins or of the Eskers on the Ordnance Survey maps, <coughs> whereas you do, I think, on Bald. I mean, I, I think that's one of his pluses. Mm, yeah. uh, satellites changed all that. Satellites have changed all that, <coughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, <coughs> give him some due for doing it 200 years before. <laughs> <laughs> before photography. <laughs> before photography, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, visualising a, a map like that is just <coughs> hard in itself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially when there were no roads. I mean, in that whole northwest area, there were no roads. And there's some descriptions from the 1820s of people traveling, you know, and the difficulty of get, getting across in, the, in March or April, the, the wet and the bogs and everything, and sinking in bogs, and no houses for shelter, and difficult. It's a work of art. Yeah. Like even looking at the trees there. Yeah. 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 This one, by the way, is by a guy called William Larkin. I, I didn't mention him, but this is this is a this is a, on the mail coach road maps of, of the, in the National Library, and um, uh, Larkin mapped Westport in uh, eighteen ten, I think it was. Uh, but uh, I uh, I had the lecture done when I remembered Larkin, so <laughs> I, uh, I decided I wouldn't. Uh, complicated yeah, that there was enough stuff in it already without trying to go and talk about Larkin as well. But it, it, it's a, it, I think that might be the earliest, one of the earliest plans, of detailed plans of Westport. When did you sign that book? It's still in the National Library. 1810? Yeah. But didn't you have one? Oh, you yeah. showed one with the name of Westport. Mm, I showed one with the name 17. of Westport, but the, oh, yeah. the actual plan, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is one of the problems of the Marquis of Sligo, that he doesn't seem to have had mm. that good map resources. He was he he was sort of involved in, but with Bald. I mean, he was egging Bald on and mm. sponsoring him and paying for his trips to Paris and whatever he did in Paris. I don't know, but he was spending three or four months in Paris at times. And, um, some quite interesting uh, uh, lacuna in his in his uh, life that uh, you don't know too much about, maybe, <laughs> but uh, or want to know too much about. But, um, the Comet Telegraph would like to know about the Comet Telegraph. The Comet Telegraph. I mean, I, I do think the Comet Telegraph is a bit unfair to him, but mm -hmm. they did have a point that they were expecting a map with boundaries on it, and Bald produced a map of physical features mm -hmm. and no boundaries. Yeah. So. Uh, when they said it was useless, they meant it was useful, useless for calculating valuations and taxes and things because it didn't tell you where one parish ended and another began. Ahead of his time, he was. You never need them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. But uh, actually, Iris. Uh, with the ball courts, were those handball courts? Yeah. The ball courts are. Uh, were they handball courts? 
Handball, I think they were, yeah. I mean, Paddy will tell you a bit more about ball courts. You're, you're an expert on ball courts. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not really, no. But, but, yeah, there were handball, must have been. What else Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just amazed at how many of them. How, you know, I showed you one near Hollymount House in the middle of the sticks, uh, well, I think it was in the middle of the sticks in, in, in South Mayo, and there's a ball court ma mentioned, but they, they, it's edited out on the final map, you see. But, I mean, it's it's inter I think it's just interesting that sport in Ireland, mm. the ball court element of sport in Ireland is there, well before sort of the hurling or the football or the even maybe the cricket. Um, but uh, people are playing. There are ball courts. It's a it's a it's something that deserves a little bit more study. Yeah, the same view is Kevin Whelan has a thing in the Atlas of the Irish Landscape called the Joy of Small Things, Ball Courts. But uh, I don't know about, I haven't only thought about this today, so I haven't read it. It's also one of the sports covered by the GA. It is, yeah. Hand Handball is also one of the uh, sports that comes under the auspices yeah. of the GA. Yeah. 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 I suppose when we were talking there about place times and and, and we mentioned Fiacre. I mean, we should. I suppose this would be a good place at the Civic Trust to mention, acknowledge Fiacre's great work. I mean, Fiacre only yeah. passed away in the last month. He died suddenly, and uh, he, he made him an enormous contribution to place names in, in Mayo, and uh, he'd be sadly missed. Because no other county has anything like this as detailed a, a study, I think, does it? No, uh, well, uh, maybe Kerry. Uh, Oh yeah, 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 I know, yeah, 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 Brandon O'Keevon. Brandon O'Keevon, yeah. But yeah, that was big, big. So will we wind up then, will we? Kevin, will you? Yeah, just like to thank uh, Arnold for a very uh, comprehensive uh, insight into Ball's map and also for a nice overview of uh, pre bald uh, maps of Mayo. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, another of the problems was the engraving, and the question does arise, after all this, how good was the, the engraving of this map? And this is what Westport looks like on the, uh, on the map, uh, the engraved and printed map. There's the, the mall, and there's the octagon, and you see, it's reduced, it's changed around a little bit. I don't know whether, do you think that looks, how does... Uh, I don't know, is it good or is it bad? Or is it miserable? Uh, I don't know, the, I, yeah, I put it on at a slightly larger scale just to let you, let you see it there. Uh, there. There's what it looks like again, the octagon um, and the mall and so forth. And you get the town plan all right, but this business of, of regular space, black dots for housing, I don't think it looks that great. I, I, feel, I feel that compared to his his uh, manuscript version of it, which I've reproduced here again. Um, that was what he did in 1812. This is what's on his 1830 map. That one looks a better, is a better uh, representation of, of that, but that's my view of it anyway. About. And uh, then there were also large scale towns. Westport area looked like, there's Westport, there's the domain, and here's the rural area as it was drawn on what was called the fair plans, which were the hand-drawn plans uh, that, uh, that were uh, uh, made up for each part of each parish in Ireland. And uh, the fair plans uh, are quite interesting as in contrast to the uh, final plans sometimes. So um, I just put one on, this is Holly, near Hollymount, this is way down in the south of Mayo. But you see, there's, the fair plan has a ball court included there. Ball court, interesting, ball, ball alleys and ball courts are actually quite widespread in the 1830s. Um, it seems to be the first, one of the early sort of popular sports uh, across Ireland. And, uh, but uh, uh, the, the Urban Survey humorless he doesn't want to put in ball, ball court um, on its final plan. So it puts in the name of the village, which was up here on this one, and it's down here 
it's been moved from there to there. Ball court has been knocked out, and purlins has been put in here, and we have um, various other little minor modifications as well. Uh, and uh, this is uh, I know it, the bit of the map has gone up, gone missing here, uh, but there's a place called Thorn Hill on the. Fair plan, and Thornhill doesn't appear at all on this one. Um, and here, uh, this appears as uh, this appears as uh, Glosh Holy Well. Um, I was told you had a debate on holy wells uh, at, a, at an earlier meeting, um, and uh, here it appears as Tubernaglosh. Uh, they, they keep on changing things around, and they change the spelling quite interesting as well. This is Omer of We. Uh, this is Omer of Boy here. You see, so, so uh, you, you think when you see the Ordnance Survey spelling, it, it should, it's standardised, but it's been standardised at quite a late stage. Um, Bertroy becomes Bartra. Well, that, that maybe Bartra is better than Bertroy, I don't know. Um, but uh, Omer of We seems to be, may to be better than. Omer a boy. I, I, I'm wondering how, uh, you know, I don't know enough about the ins and outs of this to be able to tell you, but what I do think is interesting is be warned the spellings on Ordnance Survey maps are, are quite, uh, quite invented quite lately, uh, quite late sometimes. And the same goes. We, we have different versions of the map of Westport as well, and sometimes different things appear on it. Uh, and uh, the, this is particularly, we can see, uh, I just want to show you a final thing, is the, the maps of the town of Westport that were done in the 1830s. Um, and uh, uh, for the towns, the Ordnance Survey did hand-drawn maps at a very large scale. And most of those hand-drawn maps are actually preserved uh, in the National Archives of Ireland. So there are these maps of Westport. Uh, some of you may know them, um, but they're, they're there in any case, waiting to be looked at. Um, and uh, I, I'll just show you a few images from them um, and from the map of Castle Bar. Westport gets the same treatment. Um, and uh, you can see, I think, very faint lines here to show the divisions between houses are actually marked in on the Westport uh, map. And this, this map, is a, it's a really fascinating map. It's at Westport in 1838. So if you don't know it or you think it would be worth reproducing or something, it, it, it's a really interesting map, I think. Um, that deserves, and again we have a ball court, uh, I get, can't get away from them, um, uh, uh, up here in Church Street which is leading to Westport House um, and uh, there's the octagon with the mar market house uh, up here and a fountain uh, at the junction between Shop Street, High Street and Mill Street here. Um, so we, we don't get too much about who occupied place, different places, but we do get the layout of the, of the town in great detail. Um, and we can see along the Mall, the uh, big Catholic church that was built uh, at the end of 18, the 1820s. The shambles behind, is, is, a, is a approach from the street uh, in through a court, into a courtyard. And there's a big shambles area here. There's a brewery. There's a Methodist church. Uh, I think this is the linen market here. This is the courthouse. Uh, Westport schools, uh, presumably the, the, the perhaps Protestant schools, I don't know, <coughs> up here. Um, so there's a lot of detail. And I show you the, the sort of garden designs even uh, in, the, in the town. So there's a lot to be uh, perhaps pursued here. Um, this is the, the fair green area, just a little bit further down the mall. Um, and uh, I think maybe there's a couple of bits and pieces, maybe, and maybe I didn't notice them uh, here. There's another brewery, I think, here. And the Presbyterian meeting house is up here with a manse beside it uh, on the edge of the town. 
presumably the Presbyterian meeting house dealt with the, uh, had a, was there it was the linen industry perhaps particularly and you, you get street detail when you look at the streets in more detail you see they, they, they show you one or two banks for sure here's the national bank the one that Daniel O'Connell <laughs> found uh, on um, James's street so, so and we've got a tan yard um, and this it shows you how you get in from the street there and uh, then this is uh, Mill Street and there's a Bank of Ireland and the rent office presumably for the Westport Estate is here um, so you're, you're getting huge detail and the design of the gardens as well um, so uh, and then there's also a map of Westport Quay uh, and I, I, I thought that one uh, is, is also very detailed. It shows the salt works uh, that were part of uh, the key area at that time. There's a turf key, there's two salt works. Uh, there's a baths here that would be very interesting to know a little bit more about, maybe. Um, and uh, then there's a custom house here. Uh, and of course, that's where we are, uh, where we are today. Uh, so I, I think that's. Uh, that's what I was going to end up with. Uh, so I just wanted to, I, I know I've rushed it, but it's just trying to give you an impression of the range of maps that exist and the, something about the possible interest areas that these maps uh, might stimulate uh, in relation to Mayo in the early 19th century. Thanks very much.